Hey, JW here. Um, I wanted to jump on for a quick video today because um, I didn't get my walk-in, which is I had five in a row. And uh, today was a very high threshold of pain. And I determined by... I check out the wound every day. I change the uh, dressings and clean it. And, and I, I just look for signs of improvement or signs of regression sometimes um, and I notice some improvements in the size as it's uh, been somewhat reduced which is good news because it had been stagnant for a while and uh, but I also noticed that I was in way more pain the last couple of days than I should be and part of it is not from the wound, it's from the residual effects of the wound. Um, because of the location in the wound, which is right, right around the ankle bone on the left-hand side, when I walk, uh, whether I'm walking for exercise or just walking to, um, to get around my mobility, um, you know, to go to work, and grocery shopping, all those things we have to do. Um, I noticed that it, below the wound I was scraping, it must have been scraping against my shoe. And part of the pain has been the stinging from what I would call a blister or really an abrasion of some sort. And uh, so I'm going to have to try to address that today and see if I can put some bandages that will stay put because I put some other bandages on yesterday when I noticed it and kind of made it worse because they weren't a very good bandage and they kind of rubbed off and then they were rubbing against the wound and you know the whole thing was I don't like disrupting the wound because when I do it causes me um, it causes me pain unnecessary pain so I try to be very careful in what I do and sometimes that can be detrimental too. It's a fine line because I noticed a couple of times I've lost my balance because I'm favoring obviously the wound side of my body, which is the left side of my body. And um, sometimes I'll, I'll, you know, I'll list a little bit to the right or to the left to, to um, alleviate some pressure on it. And uh, last night I lost my balance a little bit and, you know, I don't need to be falling right now. I don't need any more. I don't need to break anything or bruise anything and cause myself any more pain than I'm already suffering. So I was telling my neighbor today the same thing that, you know, as we get older, we, we have to compensate for things sometimes. And when we do, um, you know, it can cause more problems. And, you know, he's about my age, a little bit younger, a couple of years younger. And, uh, he, uh, he said the same thing. In fact, he just had surgery also for uh, melanoma on his stomach, which was kind of odd. Uh, they, they stitched, he told me, both the inside and the outside of his stomach. I've heard of it. But anyway, he's, he's feeling a lot better. He had it done Thursday, and I don't think they went in as deep as they went in. I know they didn't go in as deep as they went in for mine, but and I'm not comparing wounds. I'm just saying that he's fortunate for him. He's had a pretty quick healing process, and He's another guy. He's very active. Uh, his name's Steve, and Steve is always uh, on the go. And he plays golf. He does spinning classes and weightlifting. And, and uh, like I say, he's, you know, he's getting up there in age, too, but he keeps himself in good condition, and uh, he's very active. Um, he's always working around the house or building something in his workshop, or even though we live in a... Um, an HOA type uh, condominium type place. We have separate houses. Um, I don't know if you can see the house behind me, but you know, it, we're separated by a garage uh, from the other people. And, uh, in one case, I'm separated by. Uh, I don't mean to be waving this around like that, but so you know, it's it's a it's a good situation we have here, and fortunately, also in addition to being a good situation, we have a lot of land because of where our unit is located. We're located, we probably have three or four times the amount of land most of the units have. 
And in addition, we have really nice neighbors who are quiet and respectful and polite and friendly. Everyone's real nice. and uh, So I got no issues at all about living here. I went from, a, you know, like a lot of people do from, who come up here, I went from living in a single-family home, and I had a pretty good plot of land there, too. But, um, yeah, I'm real happy up here, but with the pain... I could be in uh, the greatest place in the world and I wouldn't be all that happy because <laughs> I'm not complaining, but it affects your quality of life. You can't do what you'd like to do. I would love to go out for a two hour, two and a half hour walk today, a hike, and get on a Plum Island, my favorite spot in the world, which is located in Newbury, Massachusetts. And it's a, a federal um, wildlife preserve. Uh, it's about 45, I think it's 45,000 acres, and, uh, you know, it's a great spot, uh, right on the Atlantic Ocean, uh, see the birds migrate, the seals, uh, they have beaches down there, but they will, um, they will block the beaches off at certain times of the year, including in the summer, parts of the summer, because there are certain birds that like to migrate or seals or fish of some sort and uh, <clears throat> it's a wildlife preserve so um, priority always goes to the wildlife as it should that's why it was set up and I <laughs> very few things I congratulate the federal government on but these wildlife preserves are I've been in a few over the years and they're amazing and I was able to Back in 2018, no, 16, 2016, I was, uh, at the time, that was eight years ago, I was 70, but I think once you reach the age of 55, I believe, that uh, you can get a lifetime pass, and at the time, I think I paid for the lifetime pass, I think it was 40 bucks, maybe. I think they're up over $100 now, but... I'm not sure on that, but I know they were going up, and I know they went up considerably. It might even be a couple hundred bucks. It's still the best, um, the best deal in America. And um, you, you know, if you have a wildlife preserve near you, or you plan on visiting some, any wildlife preserve in the country, federal um, preserve, uh, the pass is good for. So, for forty bucks, I think it was even. I want to say it was twenty bucks. It was some ten bucks. It was a ridiculously low figure. And the guy, I think the guy told me I beat it by like a couple of months. They were going up. I think it was 10 bucks. It was a joke. <laughs> I mean, I've used it hundreds of times so far. And I mean literally. Uh, probably a couple hundred times anyway. And it's just a beautiful spot. It's like paradise. I get down there. I try to get there at before 6 a.m. Um, there's probably a handful of people. Uh, a lot of them bird, a lot of bird watchers get down there, and a couple of guys walk, a couple of women walk, and a couple of bicycle. And as the day go, as the day goes on, there are cars that drive through and uh, go down the road to the preserve, to, to different parts of the uh, the preserve. And there are beaches, and they have like uh, walkways, uh, wooden walkways and stairways that lead to the beaches. And uh, but they're very strict. Again, if there are any um, if there's any type of migration or animals on on the beaches, uh, and they will restrict access to not only the beach, but even to the viewing areas of the beach, they'll rope them off. So most people are pretty good about, uh, about uh, observing that. Uh, there's always a few, you know, but for the most part, uh, most people are pretty good. As I mentioned yesterday, I, I was talking about human nature. And, when I was doing my crossing guard uh, gig yesterday that, you know, some people, they can't stop fast enough for you. You know, they want to be, they want to make certain, as I do, that the uh, safety prevails and everything. So, but there's always that person who thinks, you know, it's all about me. And again, I don't, at least I try not to lose my temper. I used, uh, in yesterday's video, I used the uh, example of the, uh, the uh, driver who, two angry drivers who one cut off the other on the, on the highway and, uh, and the other one chased him and they pulled over and the guy who he was chasing pulled a crossbow out of his trunk and killed him with it. 
So I learned my lesson. That happened. Oh, goodness, that had to be 15 years ago, I guess, 10, 15 years ago. And, uh, yeah, it's so I try to, even if I get angry, I try to count to three and uh, calm down. And always realize, as I said yesterday, that people are going through things sometimes that we don't know about. And it could be something that they're experiencing in their life. And so, you know, just let it go. I, read, I took some course one time, I can't remember the name of it, but it just said, just throw your hand over your head, let it go. If something's bothering you, let it go. So I try to do that, and I've been good at it for the most part. I've had a couple of incidents where I probably lost my cool. Not probably, I did. And uh, I said, John, what are you doing? What are you, what are you gonna fight this guy? <laughs> You're too old to fight. <laughs> you weren't that good when you were young. <laughs> so, um, Anyway, yeah, I just thought I'd jump on because, like I said, the pain's been really tough today. And I thought of a passage I once, once read, and I'd give credit, but I don't recall the name. But the passage was said something to the effect that pain makes cowards of us all. And uh, in my experience, it's very true. Last night, um, I was beside myself because the pain was such that it was like being tortured and uh, I knew I'd get through it eventually but at the time I was physically exhausted and mentally exhausted trying to um, to deal with the pain so I thought I'd you know, whenever I have situations like that I think it's good to jump on because I'm sure there are people out there who maybe watch this or maybe not but maybe someone will watch this someday and they might be in the throes of some pain and I just wanted you to know that you're not alone, and uh, and it's I guess it's part of the human condition. We'll all probably experience some pain before we go to the next uh, stage of life. But I hope that you are not experiencing pain now. But if you are, uh, know that I'm having a good thought for you. And um, if you want to leave a comment or if you want to get in touch with me, I'm more than happy to listen. And, uh, it's part of my gig now. Um, I told God that if he helps me get through this, that even if he doesn't, I'm going to do it. But if, uh, as I think I'm being, I think I'm here for a reason. And uh, I'm 78 years old, going on 79 next month. But I think I have a purpose. And uh, I hope God will guide me. And I'm thinking maybe that's it. Maybe to help people who are going through some difficulties in life. And if I can do that, I try to uh, observe people now more than I ever did. And uh, sometimes I'll even go up to them and ask them if they're doing okay. And people who maybe you wouldn't ordinarily speak to for fear of you don't know them and they might be up to something or whatever. I don't, I don't worry about that anymore. I, I can usually get a feeling if someone might need just a hello, how you doing, whatever. Buy them a cup of coffee, whatever. You know, the, the, for a while there, this thing was going around, play it forward. You know, you'd buy someone in line behind you, you know, drive through or something, you pay for their order or whatever. But I'd rather, um, you know, the guy you paid for might be making a million dollars a year. But th that doesn't mean he doesn't deserve someone to show him a good deed once in a while. He does. But I'd rather help someone who looks like they're in need. And uh, So I'm pretty observant now when I go on my walks and... When I, uh, when I work, I see a kid who looks troubled, especially a child. I, I always try to help, ask him if everything's good at home. Not being nosy or trying to get anyone in trouble. I'm just, want to make sure he's all right. I call them my kids for a reason. I'm in charge of them and, uh, you know, that's the way it is. So, I'm uh, happy to do it. I hope you're doing well today. And, I'll check back in with you later and uh, let you know how things are going. Right now, pain's pretty high, but it'll subside eventually. It always does. Thanks for listening. Talk to you soon.